right? A lot back of at you. from um, uh, some of our favorite wrestlers, and of course, one of our all-time favorites is right here, <sighs> yes, Nick indeed. Bockwinkle. And we spoke uh, last show about this gentleman, and once again, I'd like to give the quick uh, prima don quiz. quiz. Who is this wrestler? Take a good look at this handsome. Incredibly fit, good-looking athlete. Bo a body and face everybody would want. Right? Body and face. Um, and a male. I mean, a male. More than happy to then, uh, have. And take a look at this uh, other one next to it a few years later. That's Mad Dog Vashon. <laughs> and uh, Nick, you said something to us uh, off-camera earlier about a story you have about Mad Dog in, a, uh, in an airplane. Uh, can you share that with us? There was a number of years that the AWA owned a two-seater rather a two-engine uh, Navajo Chieftain airplane. And it uh, usually was a 10-seater, it was brought down to two. And uh, technically, officials were supposed to fly around in it. And occasionally, what would happen is you'd have wrestlers and the promoters and, and referees and other people would be getting on it. And the plane kind of traveled pretty much all around the Midwest. On this one given night, the plane was going from Omaha to Minneapolis. And uh, sitting in the back by the door, was Mad Dog Vashon and uh, Adrian Adonis. And uh, I knew how to fly, and I was sitting up in the right front seat, the pilot, and we're cruising along at 10,000 feet. And just like in the movies, there's this loud, horrendous crashing sound, and the airplane's going <laughs> And wind is whistling through the, 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 the airplane. So, you know, we figured something hit us. But just as quick as it happened, and uh, the pilot grabbed the stick, and there was a red light that came on up here at the <laughs> same two, and I'm looking at the two, the, the two tachometers were right in front of us. And in an airplane, even though there's that noise and sound, you don't know if engines are running or not. So I looked there first, and about that time the pilot said, he said, we got power. I said, we got power, and this red light came on, which meant we had a door that was open. We didn't know if it was a door luggage open. door, uh, the door to the back of the airplane, uh, one of the, like I said, one of the luggage compartments or out on the wing, on the engine uh, places. And I, so we said, what's going on back there? They said, the door is open. It hmm. happened that I, am, about a month before this, I'm reading an article that of planes of this size that carry from six, say, to 20 passengers, two engine planes, props, that the number of them that would fly with the door hanging down this was the only one that would fly that way. Had this been any other brand, the plane would have been on its way down. So oh anyway, he calls in, an emergency, and he says, uh, you know, and he says, okay, head for Fort Dodge, Iowa. There's an old military runway there. It's very wide. They said the only thing is you got a 30 mile an hour wind out of the south, and the runway is heading straight west. So we got the door hanging down, and we got to land this way. So I said to the pilot, I said, uh, and he was a Northwest pilot, I said, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to come in on a 45 degree angle of that southern wind and kind of like just touch down on the corner of the runway as oh. tight as I can. Maybe we'll roll across. If we roll off onto the grass, maybe we'll be going slow enough that it won't tear the airplane up, but we'll be on the ground. And he says, maybe I'll be able to turn it down the runway. <laughs> and God bless him. Maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> and God bless him. He did. He, he just took and he set that thing down and just, and I mean, just, just gently. It was a real wide runway and was able to get it, get it down. So we all get off the airplane. He says, Nick, I need to know if the airplane door opened by itself or if somebody fooled with it. So the <laughs> dog was sitting by the thing. Hmm. And so I went back and I said to him, I said, excuse me, dog. I said, can I talk to you for a minute? And we stepped off to the side and, he sa and I said to him, I says, how did the door open? And the dog says, I open the door. <laughs> <laughs> That'll explain it. I couldn't argue with the statement. And I says, you know, I, I figured, huh, why did you open the door, dog? It was a gorgeous night. I thought we should have some fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> and people, and people, and there's people who think that, you know, they saw this guy on TV carrying on the way he carried on that when he got off TV, he was just a normal, average guy. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately opened the door. Best part of it was, for whatever reason, well, what had happened, he had some pain pills, and he had had a few beers, and supposedly Adrian had given him a quaalude, which would help the pain on this bad knee that he had. And uh, 
but he, but he threw his wrestling boots out the airplane. Now I'm trying to think of the farmer the next day that finds two black little boots in the <laughs> middle of a field with no footprints a half a mile from the nearest road, <laughs> and then we start saying extraterrestrial beings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, kind, what, kind, what kind are they? But uh, yeah, so that was just one of you know Mad Dog's little stories. <laughs> and I imagine you know some other uh, yes, I do stories about that gentleman. Yes, I do, and a lot of the others. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic.